Imagine, if you will, a peaceful small town in Iowa, abruptly shattered by a horrific crime that still remains unsolved. The date is June 9th, 1912. The setting is Villisca, a quaint town that epitomizes the tranquility of the American Midwest. As the sun sets on this serene Sunday evening, the townsfolk retreat into the comfort of their homes, completely unaware of the terror that would soon descend upon them. In the heart of Villisca, the Moore family settles in for the night. Josiah Moore, a well-respected businessman, his wife Sarah and their four children, Herman, Catherine Boyd and Paul, all retire to their bedrooms. Their homestead is a picture of domestic bliss, a haven of safety and warmth. Joining them on this night are two visiting children, Lena and Ina Stillinger, friends of the Moore family who decided to spend the night after attending a local church event. As the night deepens, an eerie quiet blankets the town. The only sounds are the gentle rustling of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl. Velisca sleeps, oblivious to the nightmare that is about to unfold. Dawn breaks on Monday, June 10th. The usual morning bustle is absent from the Moore household. Neighbours begin to notice the unusual quiet. Mary Peckham, a concerned neighbour, steps into the Moore home only to discover a scene of unimaginable horror. In the stillness of the house, she finds the bodies of the Moore family and the Stillinger girls, all brutally murdered in their sleep. A peaceful night in Villisca has been transformed into a night of unspeakable terror. By morning, the town of Villisca would be forever marked by a gruesome event that is as chilling as it is perplexing. As we delve into this century-old crime, remember, this is not just a tale of horror, but a mystery that continues to baffle investigators to this day. In the aftermath of the shocking discovery, the authorities scrambled to find the culprit behind this heinous act. The initial investigation was fraught with difficulties, a stark reminder of how much we now take for granted in the field of forensics. Fingerprints were not yet a recognised form of evidence, and DNA testing was still a science fiction dream. The crime scene was contaminated by curious townsfolk and even reporters stomping through the house, their morbid fascination eroding any hope of preserving crucial evidence. Law enforcement was left to rely on the rudimentary tools of the early 20th century. Witness testimonies, alibis and good old-fashioned detective work. The brutal nature of the crime suggested a perpetrator with a deep-seated rage or disturbed mind. The theory of a transient murderer, perhaps a drifter who hopped on and off passing trains, began to take shape. Such a person would have the ability to commit the crime and leave the area swiftly, disappearing into the vast American landscape. However, suspicion also fell closer to home. A local reverend known for his fire and brimstone sermons came under scrutiny. Reverend Lynn George Jacqueline Kelly, a tiny man with a stammer, was reported to have shown an unusual interest in the crime. He had allegedly told a congregation in Macedonia, Iowa, that he had a vision of a man slaying a woman and children. This, coupled with his supposed presence in Villisca on the day of the murders, made him a person of interest. Yet, despite the relentless pursuit, the authorities found themselves ensnared in a web of conjectures and dead ends. The murderer left no clear trail, no definitive clues, a ghost who vanished as swiftly as he had appeared. The investigation was like trying to capture a wisp of smoke with bare hands, leaving the authorities and the town in a state of unnerving uncertainty. Even with the whole town on edge, the authorities were no closer to finding the perpetrator. As days turned into weeks, the unsolved murders took a heavy toll on the once peaceful town of Villisca. The quaint, tranquil streets that once echoed with the laughter of children now lay eerily silent, shrouded in an oppressive fog of fear and uncertainty. The town, once a beacon of rural serenity, was now a place where every shadow held a potential threat, every noise a potential alarm, the impact of the murders was profound, etching deep scars into the heart of the community. Parents held their children close, their eyes reflecting a terror that no words could adequately express. The once bustling marketplace was now a ghost town, as residents locked their doors and peered anxiously through curtained windows. The spirit of camaraderie and joviality that once marked the town's social life was replaced by an atmosphere of paranoia and suspicion. Every stranger was a potential killer, every friend a potential suspect. 
The economic consequences of the crime were equally devastating. Visitors, once drawn to Villisca's charm and hospitality, now gave it a wide berth. The grim tales of murder too chilling for comfort. Local businesses suffered, their customer base dwindling as fear kept townsfolk at home. The town's economy, once robust and thriving, was now on the brink of collapse. Yet, amidst the fear and turmoil, the town's resilience shone through. Community leaders rallied the townsfolk, encouraging unity and strength in the face of adversity. Vigils were held, prayers were offered, and the town's church became a beacon of hope and solace. The people of Villisca, though shaken, were not broken. They faced their fear, their grief, their suspicion, and chose to stand together, to support each other, to survive. The shadow of the gruesome crime hung over Villisca, casting a pall of fear and suspicion. Yet the town stood defiant, a testament to the enduring human spirit, a beacon in the darkness refusing to be extinguished. Despite the passage of time, the mystery of the Villisca axe murders only deepened. In the aftermath of the gruesome event, theories and suspects began to emerge, each one more intriguing than the last, yet none leading to a definitive conclusion. The first suspect to catch the public eye was Frank F. Jones, a prominent Villisca resident and Iowa State Senator. Jones had a business feud with Josiah Moore, one of the victims, which led some to speculate that he hired a contract killer, William Mansfield, to commit the murders. However, these allegations were based largely on hearsay and circumstantial evidence, and neither Jones nor Mansfield were ever convicted. The most controversial suspect was a man of the cloth, Reverend George Kelly. Kelly was a traveling preacher who had attended the same church service as the victims on the night of the murders. He was known to have a history of mental instability, and shortly after the murders, he left town. His hasty departure raised eyebrows, but it was not until years later that he became a serious suspect. In 1917, almost five years after the murders, Kelly was arrested and tried for the crime. The main evidence against him was a signed confession, in which he claimed to have been instructed by a voice saying, Suffer the children to come unto me. However, his defense argued that the confession was coerced during an intense interrogation and that Kelly's mental state made him susceptible to suggestion. After a long and dramatic trial, Kelly was acquitted, the jury unconvinced of his guilt. Other theories suggested the involvement of serial killers, transient laborers, or even unknown members of the community. But none of these theories ever led to a conviction. Theories were many, but solid evidence was scarce. And as the years rolled on, the chances of solving the case grew slimmer. The truth behind the Velisca axe murders remained elusive, the case growing colder with each passing year. The echoes of this chilling event continue to haunt the quiet town of Velisca, a grim reminder of a crime that remains unsolved to this day. Over a century later, the Velisca axe murders continue to intrigue and baffle true crime enthusiasts. The gruesome act, committed in the dead of night, has remained a haunting enigma, its mystery deepening with the passage of time. The enduring fascination with this case is not surprising. After all, it's a tale that has everything, a peaceful small town, a seemingly motiveless crime, and a list of suspects that reads like a who's who of the early 20th century's most notorious characters. But perhaps the most compelling aspect of the Villisca Axe murders is the utter lack of resolution. Despite countless investigations, both official and unofficial, the case remains as open today as it was on that fateful June morning in 1912. This unresolved mystery has given rise to a vast body of literature. Numerous books have been written, each offering a different perspective on the murders, the suspects and the enduring mystery. Some authors have built their entire careers on the Villisca axe murders, their works becoming a testament to the enduring fascination with this chilling crime. The Villisca axe murders have also been the subject of countless films and documentaries. These visual narratives, with their dramatic recreations and expert insights, bring a new dimension to the story, allowing audiences to immerse themselves in the eerie atmosphere of the time and place. Podcasts, too, have delved into the dark corners of the Villisca Axe murders. 
These audio narratives, often released in serialized form, allow listeners to engage with the mystery in a more intimate, personal way. The voices of experts, historians, and even descendants of the victims echo in our ears, bringing us closer to the heart of the mystery. Who committed the Velisca Axe murders? Why were the Moors and their guests targeted? What was the motive behind this horrific act? These questions and many more remain unanswered, turning the Velisca Axe murders into one of America's most enduring unsolved mysteries.